Uh, thank you very much. It's a, it's a great pleasure joining uh, this very interesting uh, discussion. Um, I mean, I, I do not wear the hat of an expert, although I am a heavyweight. Um, <laughs> but but let, me, let, me, let me tell you how I want to approach this. I think it was a, it was a good presentation. My only, my only uh, uh, observation on this would be that it is, um, uh, this is, this, this gives us um, uh, a, a, a microscopic also, microscopic understanding of the dynamics of migration. But there is a sea change in uh, the understanding of migration when it comes to climate change, and I'll try and explain that. You see, migration, I mean, as uh, having been involved in this um, discourse over years, um, I have been a tremendous advocate of, of uh, recognizing the value of migration in the development con uh, uh, discourse, uh, in understanding how change in production relations un uh, uh, necessitate this uh, migration uh, and all of that. So there, there's a big, uh, big context there. And the fact that there is constantly, constantly a, a stream of migration responding to exigencies ranging from political, social, to economic, to environmental, is, is definitely um, uh, factual. And I think this has been uh, beautifully covered in the presentation. Um, if we step out from uh, the notion of migration, to displacement, then I think we'll be able to understand the context of climate change better. Um, when we talk about um, the, the um, shall we say, the danger signs of climate change that we've, we've been witnessing over the periods in <coughs> terms of micro-level impacts on populations, then we have seen how this response is part of that continuum of migration coming from river, river erosion, coming from economic shocks, coming from population um, uh, pressures, and all of that. And I think uh, I have no quarrel on that. The issue that has come up in the context of climate change is not migrants on migration as vulnerability. Um, in fact, even in the context of climate change, we have been talking about migration being an effective adaptation tool. Now, where, where do we depart? The departure is when we talk about, uh, when we talk about a storm or a cyclone or inundation and people um, uh, raising, raising their homestead with, with uh, earth that they cut from the, that they, they dig out from, from contiguous land. And part of the family stays on, and others move to the cities for economic opportunities. This, this is not the case when you have, for example, a sea level rise, and let's say, states like Vanuatu or Kiribati go under. Now, there is no option for you to build higher ground there. In fact, there's an interesting political science question there as to what happens to sovereignty when the territory, territory is not. Now, for a country like Bangladesh, where you have <coughs> a very low-lying coastal area, and if you have a two meter rise in sea level incident upon global warming, we are talking about the sea moving inwards. And some saying that the low water baseline <coughs> would be 60 miles from Dhaka. And therefore, it is not a question of people making a choice of migration, but the fact that people would be displaced from where they are. And therefore, displacement, which is an imposition, 
and migration, which is an act of choice, are different. And we have been looking at the impact of climate change in the context of displacement, and the <clears throat> red signs go up on that. And therefore, the numbers would also be different, and there would not be a continuum of the migration trends because um, although we may have 5, 10, 20 percent people moving in, moving out, if you have a displacement, there's a wholesale displacement because there is no place for people to stay and their access to opportunities are all, wash, uh, all gone. And this would then require a response from them uh, and that obviously um, can be called migration but this is this is pure and simple displacement and there would be people <coughs> competing for livelihood access to opportunities in the contiguous equally populated contiguous zones and uh, <coughs> obviously there would then potentially and this is an issue I I, I did discuss in the pre cop at Copenhagen when Connie Heidegger raised what it all meant now, if you're talking about uh, uh, losing out, uh, let's say, 20% of the land mass of Bangladesh going under, <coughs> what happens to the people who are there? They do not show resilience on the, <laughs> on the water. They do not build higher homesteads on the water, but do get to be driven out of that territory, and that comes to about 25 million people. Now, um, and, and, and then what would usually happen is it won't stop there because as you, as you look at a conflict between people who are displaced and would be competing with people in the contiguous areas, this movement would push further and there would inevitably be transboundary movement of people. And that would mean tying up with trafficking, gun running, smuggling, drugs, and the rest. And this is the context of conventional security threats mm -hmm. that we need to understand in the context of climate change. Not migration as an adaptation to climate change, but displacement induced by climate change. I think we need to draw that line. Now, where do we come? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you of two UN. Um, events which address these separately. In 1986, uh, in um, Kobe, the UN Population Fund organized an interesting international uh, seminar on developing medium-sized cities to take out the pressure from the larger cities in this continuum of movement and urbanization uh, from, uh, from whatever reasons, from um, and, and then we had in 1995 the CIS conference in Geneva, which looked at the various humanitarian challenges after the uh, demise of the Soviet Union. And uh, we were able to devise a lot of these interesting new nomenclatures in the continuum of, um, of, of the vulnerable people there. One being involuntarily relocated persons like the Russians third generation Russians in Estonia, whom the Estonians felt were Russians, and these people had no clue where in Russia they belonged to. But there was one interesting uh, category, which was uh, the people who had been displaced because the Aral Sea had gone dry. And a new mandate was created for the UN High Commissioner for Refugees called the Environmentally Displaced People. So we are talking about a different category of displaced people as opposed to my, migration in mm. part of the continuum of migration. Yes, in that context, migration is an adaptive mode. We have, as of now, even now, for example, senility intrusion, which makes paddy cultivation in the South difficult. And therefore, that has induced migration. But uh, looking at uh, this, we, we, we find an interesting coming together of, of two responses to climate change that seem to keep people apart in the conferences, adaptation and migration. Mm. And we often say that they do come, come together because the way in which we can adapt to this is to go for 
cultivating salinity resistant varieties. And the way to get these salinity var var uh, resistant varieties is to invest in R&D. And your adaptation and mitigation strategies come together. I, <coughs> I will hope to, at some point, um, uh, engage, if, if you will, on some of these issues. But <coughs> um, looking, looking back to um, uh, the, the Bangladesh scenario, we would also like to raise the, um, the issue of the, um, uh, the, gla the, the, the glaciers up there in Bhutan and Nepal, mm -hmm. which are threatening to burst. And you're, therefore, you see, we have a situation where too much water, inundation from the north yeah. and inundation from the south, would take away the land and with it the access to opportunities that <coughs> people enjoy. And therefore, people would no longer be where they are. And this is the, the new perspective with regard to people's movement that need to be read into because of climate change. One response here is people have looked at this, and this is because of how people look at climate change. There are those who know that it's here and now. There are those who think it's here but not now. And there are those who think that it's now but not here. <laughs> and, and therefore, there's, there's a diversity of how you respond to this. And we have found that this is aggravated by the fact that by and large, global <coughs> engagements are predicated by securitization. And therefore, as long as we are able to bring an, a dimension of securitization of climate-induced displacements, or even climate change, we would be able to see people really uh, get into the act. Otherwise, we will have people sitting in the business class quite comfortably uh, while uh, fire burns in the economy class, thinking it won't get to them. But I can show you it will get yeah. to you. Okay, can we Thank you. No, that's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, High Commissioner.